Well, welcome, everyone. How are you feeling tonight? Great. Okay. Sort of. Okay. Um, just for the people who will eventually be listening to this recording, um, we're halfway in between Armadale and Tamworth in uh, New South Wales in a place, uh, a sheep farming a sheep station called Kyabra at the invitation of Sue and Michael. So thank you so, so much for that. Um, there's a, a bit of a varied program that I thought about having tonight, a bit of question and answer, but also um, Monica's going to challenge herself a little in front of a group. She'd prefer to do this mediumship privately, and, uh, and I've been encouraging her to uh, attempt to deal with the emotions of doing it in front of a group. And so uh, she's going to try to do that today. So it may be successful or it may not, depending on what happens. But there's some people who'd like to speak to us from the spirit world, which we'll also like to answer some questions for. So that's why we'll do that today as well. So would you like to get that over and done with? <laughs> Just making sure we are recording and we are. I'll hold the mic for you so you don't have to worry about that. Now, um, with all mediumship, if you just bear in mind, it's the sum total of all your attitudes towards the mediumship that determines how the mediumship actually goes. So if half of the audience feels really doubtful and quite upset about it and feeling challenged about the whole idea of talking to spirits, then that will only bring certain type of spirits to talk to us and, and some spirits will find it very, very hard to talk through all of that emotion that's getting projected at them. So the key is to be as open as you possibly can emotionally without actually necessarily, and, and definitely not being judgmental with regard to what you hear. Um, and the, the, the least judgmental we are, the most freedom is allowed both to the medium who's doing the channeling so that they can just feel their own emotions and concentrate on their own connection and also for the spirits who come to talk with us because at the end of the day, they're trying to talk to us to get answers and to their questions and if they're getting a heap of projections from us of judgment and disapproval and other types of emotions, obviously it's very, very difficult for them to actually talk to us while all those other projections are going to them. It's a bit like you sitting in an audience of people knowing that half the people hate you or half the people dislike you or half the people are angry with you and it's a lot more difficult to talk freely than it would be sitting in an audience where you know that uh, most of the people are okay about listening to you and things like that. And so if you can bear that in mind with regard to any mediumship that occurs and, uh, and that will apply a fair bit tonight because I'll be talking to different people about different spirit events tonight a bit. So, in terms of how, and showing and demonstrating how spirit interaction occurs a lot with humans far more than we actually know. So, that's one of the subjects I'd like to talk about a bit more tonight. David, you'd like to? Is it helpful? Uh, you need a microphone every time you ask a question. There's one straight behind you. Yeah, you can sit in your seat and it takes four seconds or so to start up once it's on. AJ, is it helpful to project positive emotions? Or? Well, it's not really helpful to project emotions at all, really, to anyone. Um, what's, hel what's helpful is just to be open to your own emotion. Because when you're open to your own emotion and feeling your own emotions, then everyone in the room can feel their own emotions. And we don't have to worry about what each of us is feeling from another person. So my feelings are just, just focus on just feeling your own emotions rather than trying to attempt to project positive emotions or anything like that. Because in the end, we do want to be neutral with regard to what we hear from the spirit world to a large degree. Because if we're neutral, then we're capable of asking questions that are intelligent and asking and getting answers that, that, that potentially are intelligent as well and, uh, and being open to conversation just like you would be here on Earth. So you wouldn't go into the conversation here on Earth projecting at the person saying, saying, oh, I'm going to try to help you be open as possible. You know, that's not what you would do in a normal conversation with anyone here on Earth. So 
So why would you do that with somebody in the spirit world? They're no different than any person here on earth. But, but while you own your own emotion, you're not projecting rage or anger or, or even, even doubt, all the doubts you have. If you're owning your own emotion, you're, you're owning all of that as well. And you're allowing yourself to actually stay open from an emotional perspective, which allows the person who's talking and speaking to give a nice open presentation to you whether you agree with it or not. Does that make sense? So that's what, if we can try to do that tonight, that, that'd be lovely. How are you doing today, Mon? Um, a lot of fears came up about doing this one in public. Yeah. Um, so some fears I kind of expected. Um, still a huge fear of being attacked by spirits, which I started getting into. Yeah. But a fear of not being able to perform. Yeah. Uh, a fear of people expecting me to perform. Yeah. Um, so a fear, a so there's some injury there can. about feeling you're like you're performing rather than just having yeah, a conversation. Yeah, I've gone into a, yeah. uh, an emotion of actually going to do a performance as a child and yeah. mum having all these expectations of me and yeah. not to let her down and yeah. feeling everything depended on my performance. Yeah. So in the case of the channeling we're doing tonight, obviously uh, while you need to feel these emotions, obviously the truth is um, that... that Every one of the spirits who potentially can speak with us tonight can have another opportunity another time to speak with you privately or speak with me and you privately or whatever. So at the end of the day, even if something doesn't go right tonight, um, there's always another opportunity. And I suppose what I discussed with Tuesday night is that we're always allowed to make mistakes. That's, yeah. <laughs> that's one thing. When, when we're children, we're often not allowed to make mistakes because yeah. there's a pain associated yeah. with a mistake yeah. by a, usually a belting or some kind yeah. of withholding from us. So... Um, so if we can just allow uh, the f fact that, that this is just like every day of our life, it's a bit of an experiment and it's just a matter of us allowing the experiment to continue and seeing how it goes. When you feel like you're getting out of yourself and worried about how the audience is feeling, just stop and, yeah. and, and we can, we can uh, talk about the emotion about that. Yeah. Mm. No worries. Okay. Yeah. Is there any chance at all of maybe... Dimming the lights a little. Or something. Yeah. yeah, it's it's a little. Oh, that's lovely. Thanks. Oh, I'm if we okay can go a bit brighter, really how's it yeah. going on there? Yeah, the, yeah the, any, anywhere yeah. there is good, really. John, John wants to talk first. Uh, which John? It's okay to say, Monica. <laughs> it's John Lennon. John Lennon, okay. I'm just having some di difficulty letting him fully in, like he was almost in, and I'm just a little bit blocked in letting him fully in. So a bit hard to allow a male to take over Still, again a bit. Yeah. yeah. Ironically, it's also a fear of not getting his accent right, because I've been talking to him all day, and it's really <laughs> clear, but it's that embarrassment of it's okay if you don't get not his letting him right. fully... <laughs> like I really don't fully want to let him speak. Myself and Monica had a discussion a few weeks ago with a man from England and Monica's accent was perfect <laughs> the entire time. <laughs> uh, okay, let's give it a go again. Good evening. Good evening, John. 
I never thought I'd be sitting here. <laughs> <laughs> sitting where? <laughs> Talking to you. <laughs> <laughs> Why is that? Quite honestly. And I'm ashamed to say it. I feel a bit of a bollocks. <laughs> it's okay to be ashamed of things. And it's okay to tell the truth. When I, when I first met this woman, I was really angry at you and mm -hmm. angry a lot actually. Yeah. And it's taken me two weeks to realize that you're not a bollocks. <laughs> <laughs> and you could be the one friend who could really help me a lot here. Yeah. And so, yeah, I feel a bit of a box. Not good, eh? <laughs> no, but there's no need to. No need to feel bad about anything that you've felt before. Imagine there's no heaven and no religion. <laughs> you remember that? <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'm kind of seeing as well that it's possible. Yep. Where I've been, it hasn't felt real possible. Yeah, yeah. For quite a while. Yeah. And I was angry at this woman, <laughs> telling me that there was another way. Quite yeah. honestly, it. Yeah. Didn't feel like that. Yeah. I thought I knew it all. Yeah. And I can see that I was really wrong. Can Can you describe a little, perhaps, um, the the condition you arrived in the spirit world. Did you did you realise it was a spirit world when you passed? I'm just slightly going in, I need to just I'm finding it hard to actually feel the fear. He's very afraid. Yeah. I know I know it's hard to recall the first entry and everything because it would have been pretty a frightening experience for yourself, I feel. Um and, it's okay. and the reason why I'm bringing it up is that it will help in terms of our discussion. It was a lot darker than I expected. Yep, yep. You expected there to be some light. I thought light. we'd be taking the peace with us and yep. we'd all be happy and all the work we'd done on earth would be right there waiting for us. And Did you think you would take the good things from the earth and leave the bad things behind? For sure. Yeah, right, yeah. And that included the good emotions inside of yourself yeah. and leave the bad ones behind? Yeah, yep. it took me... Yeah. A heck of a long time before I even started feeling good again. Yeah. yeah. Felt really bad about myself yeah. and how I've treated people. Yeah. Yeah. But it was just my expectations being really dashed, you know? Yeah. Yeah. It wasn't what I expected at all. So, what were your expectations, John? Like that? I thought I'd feel the love, man. I thought I'd feel the love. Yeah. Yeah. It was very little. Yeah. And when you passed, because everyone else is in a similar condition, there's not much love in there. It's not like you can go to a place and get extra love, is there? No. no. It's not like you can take drugs and <laughs> sit in a bed for a while and feel good or be with your woman, you know? Yeah. It doesn't quite work that way. No, no. <laughs> so it must have been quite confronting that that first experience. Did you pass firstly into sort of the changeover period? where you had some helpers helping you, or did you go straight to...? No, I had some brothers who were trying to teach me stuff, and yeah. quite honestly, what I thought they were saying was a load of bollocks as well. Yeah. Yeah. And it took me a long time before I'd even start. I, I basically tried to look for teachers who on earth yeah. inspired me, like Krishna, yeah. And, yeah. and couldn't find anyone. I, I found people who liked what he taught on earth, earth as well. Yeah. But were... There were none of my spiritual leader friends who I thought would be there waiting for me. Yeah, yeah. Have you since met any of them at all or still haven't really met any of them? No. no. I've met lots of people who have been on a spiritual path and that's why it all had to stop. It felt really empty. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was just like something was just shriveling up and going grey and old. Yeah. Can you see that all of the people you met in the spirit world who you thought were on a spiritual path weren't really on a moral path. Can you see that? And they're all in their head, man. Yeah, yeah. All in their head. Yeah, that's it. And there's enough of that here, you know? Yeah, yeah. 
And can you see how, too, that they didn't, even when they were on Earth, they didn't have very good morals, really, when you compare it with what you now know already? Not compared to what's going on. Yeah. It's yeah. not true. Yeah. So, so it's no, like you can see on Earth, it's no good just to be spiritual without the morality and without the love and without the real love coming out of you and the real no. feelings of love. Yeah. That's all bollocks. It doesn't work here. Yeah. That way I will. Yeah. So do you now understand with the discussions you've had already with Monica how, why you are where you are? Like, is it, you, you now understand why? I had a very huge anger at women, which I didn't realise was so bad. Yeah. <laughs> I'm really ashamed how I've treated women. Yeah. I had no idea. Yeah. Um... I've also realised what an arrogant prick I've been. I really thought I knew it all. Yeah. And she showed me that I know very little. Yeah. And I've shown that it, it really helps to just be open to actually hearing other stories sometimes, you know? Yeah, yeah. So in the last couple of weeks, Monica's told you some things and you've managed to test them out a bit, haven't you? So, yes. So how have you found them? Have you found them to be true, what you've been told? or As soon as I could feel her sadness for me and her love for me, yeah. I could see her changing and I wanted to know why that was. Yep, yep. I'd seen before, in a few days, before her talk came to me that... Other people were coming to me and they looked different too. Yep, yep. So I asked her to tell me what it was she was doing that was making her not feel old and shriveled and grey. Yep, yep. And she told me that I needed to feel the shame. I felt the battery in my woman, the battery in my Yeah, yep. <laughs> and as soon as I started feeling that and just getting angry, like really, really angry, yeah. <laughs> really fucking angry. Yeah. <laughs> Just this sadness started coming away. That's it, yeah. And I just noticed that suddenly this old greyness and shrivelness didn't feel as intense as it was before and it felt like there was warmth returning somewhere in yeah. this grey place. Yeah, yeah. And so I kept just talking to her and I could feel her love for me and I could see she really wants to help us. Yeah, yeah. And then I felt really sad that I'd been horrible to women because she's a woman too. Yeah, yeah. And I can see that not all women are bitches the way I thought they were. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> can you see that your emotions towards women, though, are related a lot to your own childhood and how, my mom. <laughs> how you're treated in... Yeah, with my mom. aunt. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> And so in a way it's like you get treated a certain way when you're little and then you just start projecting that at the opposite gender as if every person's like the person that you, brought, you were brought up with. Yes. Yeah. It just seems really unfair, you know, that I didn't know this and I've been here for so fucking long. Yeah. And I could have done so much had I known, you know. And I'm wondering why I didn't know before now. Well, the reason why you don't know and, and is because there is a very much a, a desert of, of truth. On, like, it's like a desert on the earth yeah. when it comes to truth. And, and a, there are a lot of people on earth who feel they're on spiritual paths, but, but they don't understand the real truths that, that I've taught for many years. They don't understand those truths. And, and as a result of not understanding the truths, they're... Um, most people pass over in in a, a fair degree of darkness, and and have the same kind of experience that you currently are having, where you're slowly getting yourself out of the darkness. But yes. but they don't even know how to get themselves out of that condition. Well, I I had no flipping idea. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And that's the case for most people on Earth, isn't it? When you look at them on Earth, you can see that most don't have any real idea. And I thought I knew. I thought I had an idea. Yeah. I had all these. Visions of what it'd be like. Yep, yep. And to be frank with you, there are many places in the spirit world that are like you envision. Yeah. Um, they're just they're just obtained by progressing in a way that's very different to what most people expect. Oh, right. 
and and I'd like to chat with you about that if I could. Um, yeah. All ears. Yeah. Um, when um, do you remember when with some of your later songs you often talked about peace, love, um, and getting rid of what the co- what you felt the causes of war were. Like religion was one of them. You felt. Yeah. And and other and other things like that, and and with many of the songs you sang, there was a reflection of your disappointment in the earth and disappointment in humankind, and that's an emotion too that you also have now. There's this strong disappointment in mankind and a strong disappointment in the fact that there's not much truth on earth, and therefore, um, and and can you see though how? When we believe we know truth, like you believe when you're on earth, there is also a rejection of further truth through those beliefs of feeling a bit arrogant and feeling like you already know, so what's this person really trying to tell me? And you've noticed already how some of the things that you've been told in the spirit world sound quite strange, but when you put them into action, they actually work. So there's there's some truth in them, and although they sound quite strange. Totally real, man. Yeah. Totally real. As soon as I did what she said. Yeah. It was like there and then it worked, you know. Yeah. yeah. So there, there are really just a couple of things you need to remember if you want to progress very rapidly in the spirit world to the places that you have imagined. Um, and there are places that are <laughs> way beyond your imagination in terms of what in the spirit world. Um, has anyone told you at this stage that there are different dimensions in the spirit world? There's not just the dimension you're living in, yeah, but yeah. there are different dimensions. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I didn't quite understand it because it sounded all very... Uh, but yeah, yeah. I'm beginning to understand this woman's kind of trying to explain. Yeah. And she's saying that if if you change your soul, you actually go to these places. That's right. Yeah. yeah. If you could think of every dimension being separated by a boundary... Of love, and if you think about what you've often thought about on Earth, which is the need for there to be love in on Earth in particular, you can see that love became for you the defining thing, didn't it? Like it was, it was something that was missing in your life a lot, something that you often were striving for and never received, and and when you passed in the spirit world, you sort of expected it to be there too, and it wasn't. And and the reality is that the love that is within ourselves determines the location of where we live in the spirit world. Does that make sense? That's what she said. Yeah. yeah. Now, every one of these these boundaries, actually, they're where you can enter different dimensions. Every one of these dimensions has a different, if you say, if you could call it level of love, that you need to obtain before you can enter the next dimension. So many of the many of the um, uh, locations that you imagine in your mind exist actually do exist, but they require a certain level of love inside of your own soul before you can enter that location. Yeah. Does that make sense? Yeah, I'm feeling kind of really angry right now. Yeah, go on. So let's go with the anger. Go with the anger. What's the anger about? It just really, it just seems really fucking unfair. Why is that? Because it applies to everyone, not just to you. <laughs> if it was unfair, can you see how it would have to only just apply to a few people and, and others get away with things? That that would be unfair. So it's not just me then? It's not just you, no. So it's every single person who has a certain level of love in their soul will go to the same location. So, so if they've got the same level of love in their soul as what you currently have in your soul they will be in the same location as yourself. But it's not what humankind think is the level of love. It's not what we judge as the level of love. It's the real level of love from God's perspective. That would explain a lot. Does that make sense? Yeah. So what often happens here on earth is we think we're loving when often we're very much not loving, right? And we come face to face with that when we come into the spirit world. Often we come face to face with the fact that we not, haven't been very loving. And the level of love requirement to get into the different dimensional existence of the spirit world is all dependent upon God's judgment of what is loving and what isn't loving and not our own. Because you, you think about it, if it was our own, some people would think it's loving to murder and they'd be there when obviously it's not loving to murder. 
And some people think it's loving to treat other people badly and some people think it's loving to suck people of energy all the time. And There's a lot of different beliefs on earth. Some people think it's loving to have sex with as many women as possible. Right? They all have different viewpoints of what love is. But, but what we need to do is look at from God's perspective. What does God feel love is? And that's really why we arrive in a certain place in the spirit world and stay in that place until we get God's level of love and we start changing our level of love to meet that level of love that's in God, do we actually begin progression? So what you're saying is what I thought was love wasn't what we tried to bring to people, wasn't love. That's right. So what were some of the things you were trying to bring to people that you thought were love? (laughs) If we could look at some of those. And we'll discuss which ones are actually love from God's perspective and which ones are not really love. We just thought, like, writing a good song would, like, bring people together. Yep. And, you know, let every brother and sister, you know, come together. Yep. And, and change the world with love yep. and music. And that's very true. That, so that is a loving thing. So there's nothing wrong with that. So you're not where you are because of that. Because that is actually a sentiment that's totally in harmony with God and it's totally in harmony with love. So we have to look at what some of the things were that you thought were love or that you weren't even conscious of doing that weren't loving. Does that make sense? One of them is this feeling you had towards women. Can you see that? Can you see how angry you were with women and quite often would have a tendency to use them? And um, can, can you see that? And that is obviously not loving, is it? Can you see that? No. Right. So so if you look around you and the other people that you've met where you are, can you see how many of them have that same injury where they're not very can can you how many women are where you are? Have you noticed that? It's pretty much all men. Okay. So the fact that it's pretty there's much a few women, there's a few women, but and can you you notice that the women are there that who are there are happy to receive men's anger? Can you see that? Can you see that? But, but there's not many women who would be happy to receive men's anger, so they're not going to be where you are. Does that make sense? Yeah. yeah. Yep. So, so obviously, if I'm angry with anybody, then there's something inside of me emotionally that needs I to just, change. Because if I'm slightly slipping out, I just need That's to... Because there's some angry women now who've kind of come in. Yeah. So if we can just ask those angry women to just step aside for yeah. a moment, because we're yeah. talking to John, and we, yeah. when we finish talking to John, we can maybe talk with the angry women who have come. And if they can just cease projecting a- their anger at John, that would be very good, because otherwise it's very difficult for him to speak to us. And we'll just... Uh, So, John, you can still hear me anyway. So what I'll, yeah. what I'll say is that um, obviously if we project rage at people, then that's not a loving act. Can you see that? Yeah. And if we use people for our own devices, that's also not a loving act. Can you see that? <laughs> so so while – and this is the, the thing on earth. Many of us do do loving things, but we also do do many unloving things. <laughs> And it's the unloving things that God is interested in correcting in us. And the only way to correct them, well, there's two ways we can correct them. One way is to be as intellectual as possible and intellectualize ourselves out of our feelings, but focus on the moral development. That's where it was. That's where you were. just head wrecking, you know. Head wrecking, -wrecking. yeah. And it goes over and over and over and over. Like a broken fucking record. Exactly. And And you revisit the same issue all the time. All the time. And you notice when you say nothing changes, there's very, very slight changes if you look at it back in history, very slight changes between where you came and where you currently are. Obviously, there's very slight changes in your environment, but the changes are very slow and very annoying in a way. You're used to having rapid change in your life, right? Well, you know, I was used to getting things done pretty damn quickly by whoever was around and we kind of expected that. You know, we wanted something, we got it, you know. And it was done. Once you made a decision, it was done. And that kind of uh, intellectual decision-making is not possible to progress very fast with that kind of intellectual decision-making in the spirit world. 
Um, so you have a choice, really, in the spirit world. You have a choice of two different forms of progression. One form of progression is this going over and over and over things, trying to work out what it was, what it was, what have I done wrong, what have I, what have I felt, whatever, and, and eventually coming to terms with what God feels is loving and then trying to bring what's inside of yourself into harmony with the love that you feel that God you know, would feel is loving. Now that's a very long-winded progress process and I've personally known people who have taken many thousands of years to progress using that method. And obviously that's quite painful to take thousands of years. Um, there was one man that I met and have talked to, he took 50,000 years oh, to fuck. get from where you are to oh. what's called the sixth dimension, which is, and all that, at the moment there are 22 dimensions and he took 50,000 years to get to the sixth one. Man, you don't want to do that. so bad. No way, no. man. No. Yeah. yeah. No. It's not going to take that long, is it? No, no. In fact, the reality is that within a few months of Earth's life, you can, you can go from sphere to sphere, to, from dimension to dimension. And you can also exceed the development of the sixth sphere and go further. One person you did admire when you were on Earth was Gandhi, right? Yeah. yeah. And you, you met him at, at one point, I feel. Is that correct? You, you remember? <laughs> I was really hoping I'd see someone like him here. I yep. loved him like a brother. <laughs> well, he's, a, he's actually with us. He's actually with us now. Like no, he's, a, he's actually with you right now, but you can't see him, and I want to explain why. Can I do that? The yeah. reason why you can't see him is because he was one of these people who also had a strong desire for love and truth when he was on Earth, and when he passed over in the spirit world, he recognised some of his issues about it very quickly, and he progressed. Uh, Right the way through, and I think at the moment he's in the 17th dimension of the spirit world, which is a place that's... It's pretty lovely. Yeah, and it's yeah. pretty unimaginable from, compared to what you, you are experiencing right now. Now, in that space, it, it, you've heard of light, and when a person's in a place of love, they're usually in a place also where they're bright. They're that's what she was showing me, man. That's what I could see. That's it. It glows yep. like yeah. she glows. That's right. And yeah. when you've seen when Monica receives divine love, you notice how she glows. Yeah. And then when she stops receiving divine love, it sort of goes back a little, a bit duller. You yeah. notice that? Yeah. Well, what happens when you receive divine love permanently? You glow all the time. Man. Does that make sense? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. And, and as you grow a glow all the time, your body also changes quite rapidly because your soul's changing and your soul's growing. And as your soul grows, your body changes and your body becomes more beautified, but also it becomes more transparent. <laughs> so I look old. <laughs> so you know how you look old right now? Yeah. Um, and that's, that's, that's a reflection of the condition of the soul. Does that make sense? And then as your body receives love, in this case divine love, and we'll talk about how that happens, as you receive divine love, your body changes and it gets young again. Does that make sense? So I won't look like this all the time. No, no. Looking like you are is just a temporary really condition. Bad. Yeah. So it's just a temporary condition and it's just important to understand that. So rather than judging how you look, the key is to feel about how you look. If, if, can you feel a difference between the two? Judgment is like punishing yourself for how you look, you know, really getting down on yourself, you know, maybe even trying to hit yourself about how you look and hurting yourself about how you look. But none of that actually changes how you look. What's going to change how you look is changing the soul, changing the love that's in the soul. And the love, remember, from God's perspective, not from your own perspective. Now, what happened with Gandhi is he did that over a short period of time and he progressed right the way through the spirit world. And uh, in the. Man, I'd love to see him. Well, he's actually with us, but you can't see him at the moment. <laughs> and I'm going to ask him to stay in his current state for a little while longer while I explain a few things. And then what he wants to do is show himself to you. And to do that, he's got to detune his light, his brightness, so that you can actually physically see him. Does that make sense? Is he that bright? He's, he's so bright at the moment that if he allowed himself to remain bright like he is right now, you would be in so much physical pain you couldn't actually bear his condition. Does that make sense? Even though we know each other. Even though you know each other. That's right. far right. Man. Okay. That is... yeah. So what we'll do is just explain firstly... How, how does he do that? Can you tell me? 
Um, he will be able to show you a lot of things like this, okay. but there are more important issues to face than how to detune your brightness and how to make yourself bright, right? <laughs> one step at a time. You're one right? step at a time. And those things are really not important from the, in the big picture of things. What is important is that your soul grows in love. Now, the fastest way that happens is for you to long for God's love to enter you. Now, one of the issues I feel you had in the, when you were on earth was a trouble with feeling that God was an entity. You sort of felt that God was an energy, energy. <laughs> rather than an entity. And the real truth of uh, the universe that many people will have to face when they pass over is that actually God is an entity that you can actually receive love from, like a parent. Like a person. Like a person, but a parent, your parent. God, I would call God like the great oversoul of the universe. In fact, the entire universe is contained within God's soul. So that's how powerful God's soul is. God's soul is the most powerful thing that would ever be known, inclu including anything in the universe. This is. But God is an entity. Right? And an as, actual, like you and me. Well, not a person like you and me. No, not a, not a human soul like you and me. God is the creator of the human soul. <coughs> Being the creator of the human soul, he can't be a human soul himself. Obviously, he must be greater than a human soul himself. Uh, Does that make okay. sense? Okay, yeah. So God, God this is... This is far out. <laughs> yeah, God is be a being. So if you could think of God as a being, and the way I think of God is as my mum and my dad. So in other words, God has masculine and feminine qualities, and I can refer to God as my mum, or I can refer to God as my dad. In the first century, you have seen in the Bible how I referred to God as my father. Nowadays and in the I first century. I always had trouble with that, man. I've got to be honest yeah. with you. That's, um... Can you see why you've got trouble with that? Can you see about your father? Can you see that? Can you see, can you see what, you, what you've done with your mum and your dad? Is you're saying to yourself, gee, if God's like my mum or God's like my dad, I'm stuffed, right? <laughs> And God isn't like your mum or your dad. Dad wasn't there. <laughs> exactly. God wasn't, is not absent. <laughs> and this is one reason why you wanted to believe that God was an energy, because, it, because your, own, your own father was absent. Does that make sense? Yeah. <laughs> now, if you just for a moment can allow yourself in, you don't even have to believe it so much at this point. All you need to do is say to yourself, if there is a God who is an entity, who is like my mum and dad, like not your mum and dad on earth, but like your real mum and dad, who love, who mum or dad who would love you and care for you, you would like to receive some of God's love. But instead of just saying it to yourself in your head, <laughs> right, like you, you've been taught to do by different people at this point, feel that feeling in your heart for a moment. Just allow yourself to feel it. Now, can you see there's a little stream of light coming from somewhere that you can't recognize that seems to be entering you and changing your body? Yeah, is this the thing you're talking about? Now, this is God's love entering your soul because you're longing for it. That's what it is. And you've seen this happen with Monica, so you know that this is the same thing. Does that make sense? Yeah? Now, you notice it's triggering your emotions as well. You feel like crying and it's quite overwhelming as well. Can you see that? Yeah. That's it. So you just let yourself feel sad. You don't, you don't try to block it by, by not feeling sad. You just let yourself feel sad. You just let yourself cry. Does that make sense to you? Just let it cry. But keep the longing going, like, as long as you can. Now, now, initially, you'll be able to keep it going only for a short period, and then the emotions will overwhelm you, and you'll have to go and feel quite, quite a number of emotions about it. Does that make sense? And then when you're ready again, you start the same process up again. You long a bit more for God's love, just in exactly the way I've just shown you. So does he mind even if I don't quite believe the whole thing yet? No, like not, it still not yet. helps a little bit. That's right. All you need to do is just say to yourself, if there is a God, like, and like... You can try the opposite if you want. You can say, if God is an energy, then you give me love. You try that for a moment and you notice what happens. <laughs> what happened? Nothing. No, nothing. 
Is it really that easy, though? That's really that easy. And it's also that easy to determine truth. You see, you see, if you're in a space where you're untruthful, God's love can't flow into you, no matter what you believe. You, think, you might think you believe true, but as soon as you believe something that's untrue, God's love can't flow. And as soon as you allow yourself to believe the truth, God's love flows. So let's try it again with the entity. If God is an entity, and I, I'll, I would like to receive love from you. Right? You just feel that emotion again. And what happens again? <laughs> you start crying again because it's overwhelming. You notice that? And that's, that's quite that simple how to receive God's love. So, John, can you also see that God's just told you whether he, he, she's an entity or an energy? Can you see that? Yeah, that's just so logical now. It's pretty amazing, isn't it? I really wish I'd done this before. Yeah. So, so, partly, while you believed God was... While we believe things about God that are not true, we can't connect to God. And that makes sense in a way, doesn't it? Yeah. It's a bit like if you believe things that are wrong about a person, how can you connect to the person? You can't, can you? you you're not understanding them. And they're not understanding you, no love flows. Oh, uh, you can't have a relationship with anyone like that, eh? That's right. But as soon as you start accepting the person for what they really are, start feeling them, you start having a, a, a transference of emotions. <laughs> uh, you start having a relationship. It's exactly the same with God. Does that make sense? Now, Gandhi knew that God was an entity shortly after he passed. While he was on earth, he wasn't certain. But after he passed, he we became met very certain. Yeah. Yeah. I miss him. Yeah. yeah. It will, you'll miss him even more when you meet him again because <laughs> he, he's far different a person than what you can currently imagine based on what you met him as when you were in London. Um, but but if we just focus again on, can you understand how to receive divine love? No, just ask. Just ask like that, and it's asking from the heart. You know, doing everything from <laughs> the heart. I've had enough up here. Man. Too much just up here. Just enough. forget all that and ask from the heart. <laughs> the second thing is that this love will flow into you until you resist it. And the problem is, initially, we often resist it quite frequently. Because we feel overwhelmed with emotion, we can't. We have realizations too, you know. Like we have a realization that oh, I treated women badly, for example, is a realization you've had, and then you have a lot of grief, and so you need to release that grief before you'll often long for God's love to enter you again. Does that make sense? So what happens is God's love will ebb and flow into you as you long for it, depending upon whether you are in truth or not. So you notice when you longed for God's love to enter you, but thought she was an energy. So if you do that again, nothing happens. She's a woman now. Well, God can be your mum or your father. God's your creator. So God so doesn't have a gender, okay. but God has masculine and feminine qualities. Wow, the plot thickens. <laughs> and, in fact, and in fact, your soul doesn't have a gender, and you are only half of it that has masculine qualities. In other words, there's another half of your soul out there somewhere that has the feminine half. Oh, I'll tell you, I'm in a bit of a spin there. Yeah. And that's how God created you. God created you in these two, the masculine part of you and the feminine part of you. And when you incarnated, you actually split into two halves. And there's a feminine half of you out there somewhere. It's like <laughs> everything I've known is just <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, and this is a hard thing. It's a hard emotion to understand. Everything that I ever actually thought I knew, <laughs> I have to give up and start again. But that's not strictly true because it's not everything that you thought you knew. It's just all the things that are out of harmony with God's designs and love that you. So you see, it's a lot of that, eh? there's a lot of that. You, you look at on earth, how many times do people come up with their own ideas? You know, one of the things that you were often concerned about was how many <laughs> religions there are, right? Now, where did all these religions come from? They come from people's ideas of what God was. Does that make sense? 
And every single person has a different idea about what God was, and none of them wants to listen to God about what God was. And then all of us bloody well thinking we know better than God. And all of us thinking that we know better than each other, too. <laughs> <sighs> oh, that idiot, he believes God's an entity. Honestly. You know? <laughs> <sighs> yeah. So what we need to do is allow ourselves to concede that actually there's a lot of truth out there, and if we can connect, and this, makes, this will make sense to you, if we can connect to the source of the truth, then obviously our ability to learn the truth will be much more rapid than if we have to experiment with the truth every day. And making it up as we go along. Making it up, <laughs> going down dead ends, finding out that's wrong, <clears throat> all that. So it is far better for you and anybody in the spirit world to connect to the source of the truth, which is God, than it is for them to actually test whether it's true through God's creation. See, testing its truth through God's creation, while it might sound all scientific and everything, in the end is the slowest way to learn. You know, that means, like, if you want to find out how the atomic structure of, of, of something works, you're going to have to go through hundreds of different sort of scientific tests, and then when you get to the spirit world, you realise that all of that was wrong anyway. You notice that? Can you see how already you've learnt, like, there's so many things that you learnt on Earth that people think on Earth are right? But just even... The things people here tell you are bollocks. It's exactly. like, where do they get that from? Then, you know, exactly. And you're just constantly seeking, thinking, you know, maybe today's the day Yeah. someone's going to tell me. The truth. And it's your desire for this truth now <laughs> and your willingness to put away the arrogance you had before <laughs> that has actually brought you to more truth. Does that make sense? That's, that's what's happened. And that's the second part of this equation. <laughs> So the first part is doing what I just showed you, and that's longing for God's love, longing for God's love to enter you. If, if you're an entity, God, can I please receive some of this love that's been talked about and, you, and, and have this longing in your heart for that. Like, it can't be a head thing, it has to be a heart thing. I can actually feel my heart for the first time. Yeah. <laughs> you notice it's softened up a bit already. It feels all... It's like, for the first time, feeling my body. Yeah, that's it. It's like this big... That you're getting out of Thing your head. Thing on my head, and it's just someone's let it go. Yep. <laughs> I can actually feel that. Can you just look down at your body for a moment too? <laughs> Do you notice your body has already changed? Fuck. Yeah. Is that just from what we've been doing? That's just right from now? what we've just done. No way. Yeah. Yeah. And that's how simple it is. No way. Yeah. <sighs> But you notice it wasn't easy for you because you had to feel all these emotions. You notice that? So it wasn't, wasn't, it was simple to do, but it wasn't easy. You had to give up lots of different emotions. You had to give up the arrogance. You've had to give up your, all of your concepts of God already. We've had to challenge those. We've had to challenge some of the feelings that you've had about women already and so forth. So you've, you've done a fair bit of emotional work in all of this just to allow this to change. She's been so helpful now. Yeah, yeah. I can feel her love from me. Yeah, <laughs> it's good, like, eh? me going, eh? Yeah. And every time she listens to music, you know, <laughs> yeah. it just feels so good. And it's not very often you had a woman actually listen yeah. to you, is it? <laughs> I, I was too fucking angry, man. And, yeah. and why am I surprised they weren't listening? <laughs> exactly, exactly. It's very hard to listen to an angry man. Uh, yeah, but not even like too fucking cocky to even think I was being angry. Exactly. You, I mean, in that really big headspace, weren't you, where you couldn't even see your own anger? Yeah. I thought I was big, bigger than you for fuck's sake. Exactly. That's just, man, I'm really sorry about that. <laughs> That's okay. You're allowed to feel these We feelings. were talking about this early on. I feel really not good about it. <laughs> That's fine. It doesn't worry me any. <laughs> um, you know, just because somebody thinks something, it doesn't make it true. <laughs> Oh, <laughs> most of my fans kind of do, which doesn't feel, yeah, it doesn't feel so good. Yeah. yeah. But thanks for that, <laughs> Let's look at the second thing, though. The second thing is something you've had to learn a bit about already, and that's about being humble. You notice you've had to give up the arrogance. You've had to give up this idea that you know already. You've had to give up the idea that, you know, what you're being told is just, ha you know, ways you call it, bollocks, you know. You had to give up the idea that, that you knew the truth. Does that make sense? And you had to open yourself up enough to realize that perhaps there was a lot and is a lot that you don't really understand. Yeah. 
Now, now that is humility. And humility also is the desire, the passionate desire to feel all of your own emotional feelings about giving up the arrogance. Like, does that make sense? All of those feelings yeah, giving up. Come that. to a point where it hurts too much to keep your arrogance. Mm. Yep. And she could see that, and she was really patient because I was being an absolute monster. Yeah, yeah. For about two whole days, you know, real angry, real angry. You were projecting anger at her. Can you, re- <laughs> can you remember when you were projecting anger at her? It was because she was brighter than you? Can you, see, can, you can you remember that? But it was also that, you know, a woman thinking she was knew more than knew me. Knew more than you. It's yeah. like, oh, man, I was out of line. And yeah. then I started seeing. Yeah, that she actually did know more than you, hey? Yeah, that's, that's the way it goes. So, so if you can remain humble now all the way through your progression and long for God's love, and remember when you remain humble, just focus on the emotions that you feel and just let yourself feel these emotions. And remember that every time you're asking for God's love and it's not entering you, it's because you believe something or you actually have an emotion in you that's blocking that love from entering you. Does that make sense? You either believe something that's out of harmony with God's love or... You have an emotion. And remember that all of your beliefs are emotional. They're not intellectual. So it doesn't matter what you think. It matters what you feel is that's the truth. This, that's, the, that's the difference. That's the big difference. Because you can think, you've seen already, you can think all you like and you can't think yourself into a better place and you can't think yourself into truth. Right? <laughs> you, can, you can know the truth in your mind, but if you don't feel it in your heart, then it's still not true to you. Is you that? just get older and greyer and more yeah. wrinkly. <laughs> now, you noticed too, as you were crying just earlier, all this grey <laughs> stuff was coming out of you. And can you notice, you see all that, just even as you cry now, like, can you see the grey just it's like, it's like the fog coming out of you and all that yucky grey. And that is the grief. The grief actually taints your soul. Does that make sense? And as you let it out of you, it relieves your soul. <laughs> And you're going to need to do quite a lot of crying to do that, to let it out of you. <laughs> it's like a fucking endless stream, you know. Yeah, and it's okay. It's going to feel, it's going to feel like that for some time, like an endless stream of grief. Does that make sense? You've lived a relatively long life on earth in, in some ways and so there's quite a degree of grief to feel. Your life was cut short as well, so there's quite a bit of grief about that to feel and so forth. Does that make sense? Like, so you, there are, and there's lots of things that we've done on earth that are worth crying about now if you start seeing them from God's perspective. Of truth, right? Oh, we've just messed things up so badly, you know. Yeah. Well, the whole human race has messed things up really yeah. badly. But and we really thought we could help, you know. That was our big ambition was to make a difference and you know, help people change through and, our music. And, and, John, the truth is that sometime in the future you will actually see that you did make some differences. You will actually see that. Do, do you know what I mean? At the moment you feel quite bad because inside of your emotion you can feel all of your own emotions that haven't changed. But as, as you work your way through those emotions, you will actually come out feeling like you did actually make some differences. With, without you, a lot of music wouldn't have changed. But also without you, a lot of people wouldn't have confronted certain emotions. Right? Music is a very powerful way to help people confront emotions. How did you make that out? Well, let, let's look at your song Imagine, for example. Right? Um, it, it's, a, it's a song that confronts people emotionally. Right? Like, how many Christians do you think are confronted by the words, imagine there's no heaven? Yeah. Didn't think about that really when, when you I wrote was it. writing it. No. no. We wanted to, people to think differently. Yeah. I don't, didn't understand You wanted people way. to think out the box, basically. That was your, your idea. But the actual <laughs> words, if you think about it, it's quite confronting to a Christian. Imagine there's no heaven. Most of them believe totally that there's a heaven and as soon as they die, they're there. And as you've worked out already... <laughs> You know, as soon as you die, you're not there. But there is a heaven. <laughs> you know, there is a spirit world. There is all of these spaces. These that... other dimensions, eh? These... You, yeah. I'm yeah. going to get someone to show you some pictures of them in a minute, and you'll see that. You'll wow, see what someone great. looks. Um, now, now, 
and no religion too. You know, here's another word so you wrote, right? So, so how how was that? Like, imagine imagine the effect that would have had on a group of people on Earth. Like, I know I know I know a man personally who, when he when he heard those words, he would not listen to that song anymore. <laughs> That's how confronted he was <laughs> by the, by your song. Imagine. He would, he would not allow anyone in his family either to listen to that song oh. because he's, he's, he was feeling that you were saying there was no God, right? No, that's not what I meant <laughs> I know, I know no. that. But that's what he was feeling by you saying okay. there's no religion, you see. By using the bloody word religion. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Now, now, that confronted, that song, unbeknown to yourself at the time, confronted a lot more people than you realised. Does that make sense? And it confronted a lot of belief systems and a lot of emotions in these people. Now, that all causes people to change. So, see, these are some of the things that are good that you did. So it did shake things up a bit. You did shake, shake things up a bit. You shook up, besides shaking up the music, well, the music a industry thing, a bit, right? <laughs> you shook up quite a lot of things. But, but at the moment, it's hard for you to see them because of all these dark emotions you feel about the other things about your life. And so the key thing to remind yourself is that every time you judge yourself, right, you are not actually dealing with any emotion and you're not getting closer to God. And also, most of the time, you're not even being truthful with yourself because the truth is that most people on earth have done some good things, done some not-so-good things. When we get to the spirit world, we've got to learn about the not-so-good things and deal with them, just like you're doing now. But also, we realise that we have done some good things too, you know? And you did do some good things too. Thank you. Right? How would you like to meet Gandhi? <laughs> I would really love to see him. <laughs> well, if you turn around, you'll see He's had to detune himself quite a lot so that you can see him. And he doesn't look anything like he used to at all. Exactly. He's himself. also quite a bit larger than he used to be, isn't he? This is fun. <laughs> and before you go and have a chat with him, because he would love to, he would love to talk to you about a lot of things. Now, he'd be very happy to be your mentor. And I would love to hang out with him. Yeah. One, there's a few little basic things I'd like to just remind you of before you speak further with him. One is that any person who is brighter than you knows more than you. I know that's a treat because yeah. <laughs> I've seen it there. Okay. Now, what would what you do is it, let's have a look at our bro, our bro Gandhi. Just turn around and have a look at him again. He's smiling at you, so just, he'll get to talk with you in a minute, properly. What he's going to do is show you that maybe we'll get him to show you a third of how bright he is, and you might just have to. Get, you'll get to a point where you might have to cover your eyes. So just. <laughs> That's a third of how bright he is in his normal condition. <laughs> and what, what we'll get him to do now, because this is also possible, is to show you a picture of where he lived when he was a third of it, like in the place where it was a third of his current brightness. In other words, where he lived like three times ago, three three different, uh, let's call them for gen generations ago, but they're not really generations. Can you see where he lived then? Now where, how's that? Like, you, you wouldn't mind living there, huh? It's not pretty nice, huh? 
It's exactly what I want on Earth. Sorry? It's exactly what I would want on Earth. Exactly. It's just... It's too out there. Yeah. <laughs> but, but, but see, where he currently lives, you can't even imagine what it looks like. Because that's only a third of what, where he lives. So it's three times better than that? Well, it's more than three times. Oh, because man. a third of... he's in, I think he's in the 17th dimension. Again, he will tell you which dimension he's actually in anyway. But if you go a third of 17 is, is what? It's around six, isn't it? So what he's just shown you is what's in the sixth dimension. Can you see that? And he lives in the 17th. So he lives like... There's a lot. There's a lot more love where he lives than what is where he showed you. I never imagined this. I never yep. dreamed this was possible. <laughs> no, no. And most people on earth have no knowledge whatsoever of any of this. That's oh, just mm. unbelievable. Yeah, oh, man, that is. <laughs> and the and the way he got there was exactly the same way as the way he's going to show you to get there. But it's also exactly the same as what I've just talked to you about. Right? And it's really quite that simple. And he's had to come to accept God's truth. He's had to come to accept what God defines as love, not what he thought was love. Because as Gandhi will tell you, there were many concepts that he had about God and love that weren't true either, and he had to give them up too. Right? But he was in a better place than me, though, I bet. <laughs> well, he passed over in a pretty good place. Um, yeah. He'll show you where he passed over. Um he had already received some divine love into his soul while he was on earth. He was the most loveliest human being. Yeah, yeah. And he had a lot of natural love in him too. Yeah. And, he, and he had a very strong desire for truth, <laughs> well, even while he was on earth, right? had a very strong desire for truth, and that's what caused him to be in very good condition. He lived that truth, as you know. Yeah, that's what attracted you guys. Example, yeah. That's what attracted you guys to him in the first yeah. place, right? That you knew he was a man who lived he the truth. He had such integrity, and he walked his walk. Yeah, yeah. Never let it slip up when yeah. I was with him. And now, what he learned in the spirit world is, as he changed to suit his walk to suit more God's <laughs> God's uh, designs, if you like, then he, he just automatically brought himself into the harmony with that truth. And that's what you will need to let yourself do. Does that make sense? Yeah. Yep. So if you can allow yourself to do that, you'll progress very rapidly. Now, Gandhi can show you far better than I can at the moment because he can transmit a lot of information to you very rapidly and he will help you actually go through this process. There will be times, John, in the process where you feel quite angry because there's a lot of <laughs> things to give up. You know, there's a, yeah. lot of, there's a lot of concepts to give up, a lot of beliefs to give up, a lot of moral beliefs to give up. A lot of beliefs about God, about religion, about the world, about the truth. All these things need to be given up. And new things accepted. New things about morals. New things about truth. New things about God. New... So, so the process is, uh, is going to be a gradual process. But it can happen very rapidly as long as you're willing to deal with the emotions inside of yourself and release those emotions. That, that, that is a part of how important it is, is to focus on your soul. Your spirit body, which is what you can see right now, right, which you can see is already brighter again, right, that spirit body is just a reflection of the love that's in your soul. So when you looked at Gandhi and he just showed you a third of his normal brightness, that's a third of the love that's in his soul that you saw. He's just like one love thing, you know. He's just... <laughs> yeah. Man, I can't begin to understand how you could have more than that. Well, quite honestly. well there's still there's still four more dimensions beyond where Gandhi is of even more love. Yeah, God's all right. Eh? God's all right, eh? yeah. 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 And this is one of the things is that we, we don't we don't understand that on earth very well and we don't trust that on earth very much. That God's all right. <laughs> Not just all right, but, but actually very loving. We, we sort of attribute God to the same qualities as we attribute to our parents and often are very damaged qualities. Eh? Yeah, that would make sense. Yeah. So, um, so my suggestion now is 
spend a f- you can come back and talk to Monica, Monica anytime you want, obviously. She can help you with anything that you feel quite unresolved from the earth. So that every time you come to talk to Monica, what's going to happen is it'll remind you a lot of your earth life. So anything that's unresolved from your earth life will be triggered in that interaction. And you've noticed that happening already, yeah, right? a lot of crying. Yeah, yeah a lot of crying to do. <laughs> But Gandhi can actually show you also not not only how to deal with all those emotions in the most rapid way, but he can also show you how to actually accept the new truth, accept the truths that are coming to you. Does that make sense? Yeah. He can show you how to let those into your heart as well. So my, my suggestion is just to follow his advice. You know the man, so you can trust him, and you know you can trust him, and so you have no trouble with trusting him now, right? Whereas a lot of people, when they passed on, have no one to trust. They don't know who to trust. And well, that's, that's what it felt like. Yeah, and that's There's a huge little. emotion. But but any person who's uh, who's darker than Gandhi, if you call it, will have less truth in them than Gandhi. And now, in your progression through your spirit world, you will notice there will be many people who come to you to talk to you about the, what they believe the truth to be. Take notice of the emotions that are in them because it's the emotions that are in them that tell you whether they really live the truth or not. Does that make sense? Whether they really understand or not. That's, so, that's the proof. <clears throat> so you can see with Gandhi, the emotions are coming out of him. They're just powering out of him, right? You can feel it coming out of him, even though he's detuned himself so much just, just to be with you, right? So, you, so take notice of that because that's the proof of somebody who's actually spiritual, who's actually full of love. Does that make sense? Yeah. Yeah, not all those people who intellectually claim they are, <sighs> but don't have that stuff coming out. Right? No more. Yeah. You can believe, you know, until the cows come home and it doesn't get you anywhere. No. It's not. And you can try to manufacture, and, and this is something very important for you to understand, and you've already understood this fairly well now. Anytime you try to manufacture something in your mind, basically you're going to spend hundreds of years trying to do that and get nowhere. <laughs> You, the, the progression in the spirit world and on the earth, really, is to do with the soul. It's to do with the emotions. Without the emotions and without the soul being involved, without the passion being involved, without actually getting rid of what I would term the evil emotions from the soul, without getting rid of those emotions, we're never going to progress, really. And that's, I reckon I have a few of them. <laughs> well, everyone has a few of them because we get quite a number of them from people on, from how we grew up and everything else, and we just need to release them. We just need to allow their release. And it's God's love flowing into us that can allow that process to occur. Do you have any qu- other questions? Because you've got, you've got a lot of catching up to do with Gandhi. <laughs> um, I'd really love to talk to you again, but yep. I really want to talk to my friend. Sure. I've missed him a lot. Yeah. And uh, and we can talk any time. Thank you. you know, I, I'm, I'm so sorry I was so disrespectful to you. You've, you've helped this woman and you've helped me. Yeah, that's okay though. <laughs> just to feel that. And Thanks for just taking that. Yeah. Thanks. It's good to meet you, man. <laughs> <laughs> we'll I'm, hang I, out and play some music someday. Definitely. Because she yeah. told me you really like music. <laughs> and I and and I grew up on the Beatles. Man. <laughs> oh, really there'll be good. there'll be a picture one day I'll show you from my own life where I'm driving like a maniac to work, singing at the top of my voice a, a whole series of your songs from your Red album. <laughs> uh, still, there's a rebel in me. Eh? Yeah, that's, <laughs> yeah that's, so that's really good. Though. Yeah. Thanks for thanks for hanging out. No pressure. <laughs> And while we let Monica just uh, gather her stuff, is there any questions that any of you have about about that, like in terms of his experience? Um, if we use the microphone so we can get it recorded, yeah, it's coming to you. Yeah, thanks, OJ. Did um, John say which dimension he was on? He's in the first dimension, oh, in, the, the first. in the hills of the first dimension when he first okay. came to, to Monica, yeah. Because that's surprising, um, yeah, to thinking of where the Beatles were when they were on Earth and the music that they put out. Yep. And this, yeah. is, this is where we often, as people, have a false concept of our own condition. And we have a false concept of other people's condition too. The, the condition of the soul is about what emotions we have inside of us. 
as John mentioned, he, he was very heavily intellectually loving, um, but there was still a lot of rage in him towards women because of his upbringing with his mother and his uh, auntie and a father that wasn't present, which, causes, which has a lot of emotions associated with it. And those emotions he, he, he suppressed at a very early age with music. So he used music to suppress his emotions rather than to access his emotions. And many musicians today do exactly the same thing. What they do, they actually write songs which are actually very emotional songs, but they write the songs in order to avoid an, the actual emotion that's underneath. And, uh, and so many of the musicians pass into quite dark places. They often are very emotional and often have a connection with God, so it's rare that they stay there for long periods of time. And, uh, and what was it since John's past? I think it's been 20... I think it was 79 or 81. 81 or 79 81 or something 81. like that. So it's about 30 years. And, and so if you just hold that yeah, sure. and So it's about 30 years, but, but in that time, he, he would have tried to do exactly the same things that he did on earth, and that is use the intellect to try to work your way through why am I here, what's going on, you know, where am I? Um, and he had a lot of, he had no concept of God really, um, uh, aside from God being an energy. And, uh, and as a result of that, if you believe God's an energy, you're not going to receive divine love because every time you have a false concept of God, you can't actually receive from God. And that makes sense when you think about it. It's so like if I have a false con if I believe you're not a very nice person when you really are quite a nice person, and I believe you're not a very nice person, how how good a relationship can we have? And if I don't even believe you're a person, if you come up to me and say, "Oh, hi, you know, I'm a, I'm AJ," and you go, "You're not AJ, you're just energy. Like you're not even a person to me. Like <laughs> how what kind of relationship can we have now?" It's like when you think about it in that terms, it often sounds quite funny, but the truth is that that's how he passed. And so, yeah, the majority of people who pass, pass into the hells of the first sphere as a result of their concepts of love. Not of the results of their intellectual concepts of love, but the results of their heart-based concepts of love, which are very, very different to what we believe intellectually to be true. Many of us in this room right now have a whole concept of what we believe to be true, and yet, yet our heart is actually in a totally different condition to what we believe to be true. And, and part of the divine love path is getting your heart to be in sync with your head. Or you could think of it the other way around, getting your head to be in sync with your heart. That's the hard part. Because in our heart, there's all these dark emotions and dark feelings that oftentimes. And in our head, every time one of these dark emotions and dark feelings pop up in our heart, in our head, what do we do? Oh, I'm not like that. Oh, no, no, it's not like that at all. Oh, no, no, just ignore that. Or no, no, get away from that. Oh, I've got to do some dishes now. You know, that helps me get away from... And we use all these different techniques to avoid the truth of what's inside of ourselves. And on the divine love path, you've got to become truthful about what's really inside of yourself. And that is the most difficult task you will face in your own progression, coming face to face with the truth of what's inside of yourself. And that's what John was going through the last two weeks, basically. When, when did he catch up with you first, Monica? Was it for you use the mic? Um, <clears throat> I can't recall exactly when, but I know uh, Senny started playing his music a lot. Right. And he was someone I really loved anyway. And I think the symbiotic uh, emotions are, again, the how the world is going. That's where we share a huge grief, yep. how yep. things are and what we would have ideally liked them to have been. Yeah. So as soon as I was getting into this grief, um, I'd feel him really strongly. And of course, I went into huge doubt then that it was yeah. Um, yeah. John. But I actually spoke to Linda McCartney, Paul McCartney's wife who passed over yeah. about four weeks ago. And I feel she was instrumental in sort of possibly... Bringing, to yeah, I feel very along. strongly that yeah. she yeah. connected at some point. Yeah. So it just started getting very, uh, stronger and stronger. And once I'd kind of put out of my head that... I, I could feel it was John very strongly, yeah. but I was just dating. And, yeah. and um, once I got that out of the way... If we just pull the microphone down to there like that, that's good. Um, once I put that out of the way, I was really able to 
connect with them. But he yeah. was very angry at women at the time, so it coincided with me processing a lot of fear about angry, uh, angry women as well uh, and men as well. Mm. Um, yeah, and, and he just really seemed to rapidly change. I was quite surprised as well. I'm always surprised for some reason that they're really willing and ready at that point when, when I talk to them. Yeah, well, the, the beauty of many who have been in the earth for, uh, sorry, in the spirit world for a few years is they've gone through all of these different techniques that they would normally use on earth to progress. Mm. And eventually none of them work, usually. Mm. And so what they do instead, now, now they're in a much open, more open state. And yeah. as he admitted himself, there was this level of arrogance there that he had to just drop before he yeah. could actually progress. Ahead. When I kind of saw him first, he looked like um, like a 1960s guru. So literally long, straggly beard. Like, so I, that's why I wasn't sure of him. Really old. Like he looked as if he was, oh uh, yeah, uh, it's hard to say, but at least in his 70s. Yeah. And that's why I wasn't <laughs> sure if it was him. But it was amazingly rapid then how he went from that, even within a week or even a few days, mm -hmm. into just being in a far more humbler place. Yeah. Uh, and I think I was really processing a lot around the time as well, and he was hanging around quite a bit, so yeah. he would have seen what was kind of going on and stuff. Yeah. But it was, yeah, just the more I hear his music, uh, I just connect very deeply with him. And, and that love, again, he could really feel that love mm. I had for him as well. So um, th that seems to... It helps him a lot. Yeah. Helps. You, you don't understand uh, here on earth how much having love for somebody who's passed in the spirit world actually draw, both draws them to you but also draws them to the truth. Like it's just, a, it's just such a powerful thing. Yeah. It's so huge. Yeah. It's so huge. Yeah. And I'm still only trying to quantify myself emotionally, um, especially when they come back and talk to you. Yeah. But... I suppose I doubted the power of love myself hugely. Yeah. So it's been huge for me to see yeah. what just having love and compassion for someone can, can actually change. Draw them into yeah. them. Hmm. Any other questions that you have about it? Uh, I think you just turned it off. Yeah, yeah I'm, I'm not... Uh not so much about John. It's, it's. I can't stop thinking now about. I had the chance to talk to Mum just before she died, mm -hmm. but it was on the phone. My sister held the phone to her ear. Yeah. And I kept saying to her, "It's okay. Um, to it's, it's good to feel your stuff. Yeah, that's good. Um, to remember." The divine love path. When you get there, find out about the divine love path. Keep trying to follow. Yeah. Having heard that, is there anyone there that she can even talk to? To. Well, it's one thing to say remember the divine love path, but there's literally billions of spirits in the spirit world who think they're on the divine love path, who are not on the divine love path. So you know, if you say to a spirit, "Oh, remember the divine love path," and ask these people about the divine love path. What, what will happen is a whole group of spirits will come to them depending on their true emotional condition. And many of those spirits will be, you know, they'll think they're on the... It's just like here on earth. Many people here on earth think they're connecting to God and are they really? Well, they believe God is an energy, so they're not really connecting to God. They're connecting to something else. Many people believe they're connecting to God when they're just connecting with another spirit. So many people have many false beliefs about what God is and how they're connecting. And those people will rush to your aid when you say... I want to connect to God, you know, those same people. Or you'll have a bunch of Christians rushing to your aid and a bunch of, you know, Muslims rushing to your aid and a bunch of all different religions running, New Age people running to you. And then you'll have heap of people saying there's no such thing as God. And, you know, and it's the same in the spirit world. We, all of those same people arrive in the spirit world. And depending on my condition, so if my condition is full of blocked emotions and blocked feelings and so forth, obviously I'll be surrounded with people who all have the same kind of thing blocked emotions, blocked feelings on all these different subjects. And it will depend very much upon whether any of them know anything about the divine love path as to whether I'm going to hear anything about it. The key thing is to tell them to long for God's love, specifically to God, and teach them how to actually long for God's love. As they long for God's love, as John experienced, there's a brightening of the soul as you receive divine love. And you actually see that occurring in the spirit world. 
And, uh, and as you see that occurring, you can feel that it's something outside of you. And as soon as you start longing for divine love, now you're in a space where you're open enough to hear some truth about the divine love path, if you like. And, and generally, spirits uh, respond to that. So it's actually the longing that comes from the soul that determines what happens. So if I've got a longing when I pass to just do all the same intellectual things as I did while I was on earth, do, to visit the same people while I did on earth, to busybody myself in the same people's lives as I did on earth, when I pass in the spirit world, I'll probably have exactly the same desires. And because I have exactly the same desires of that, I'm not very focused on God and longing for God's love or any of those things. So the spirits that are going to be attracted to me are only the spirits who I long for. And they'll be all ones generally who are on the natural love path, all having different feelings on that part. And I can use the terminology divine love and that doesn't mean anything in the spirit world because there are literally billions of spirits who believe they're in a space of divine love but they're sitting in the sixth sphere and never have received divine love all their existence. So it means yeah, very little. Okay. The, the, I, uh, I did speak to mum after last time you were down. Yep. I got on the phone the next night and we had a good yarn. Yep. The whole idea was to try and make her remember what that was and it was literally a few, few minutes, wasn't it? Mm -hmm. um, and, and after well, you can continue great. to do this now even though she has passed now, right? It, you can continue to do it. So you can continue to long for mum to come to you. You say, mum, remember about the divine love path. This is what it's about. Like This is what it is. Firstly, long to God. Long for God to receive. If God's an entity out there somewhere, long for God's love to enter you. You try that. Notice whether your body gets brighter or not. How do you feel? You start crying. You need to let yourself cry. You notice John was crying every time he received it. You see a lot of people in the spirit world start receiving a little bit they start crying, and so what do you think they do? They shut it all down, just like many of us do, right? Because we don't want to cry. And you, mum, let yourself cry, let yourself cry. You're going to remember to let yourself cry during this process, you know? Remind of the principles, the basic principles. And what will happen is she'll rapidly connect to spirits under those conditions who can help her. Um, here on earth, the love that you have for a person who's passed is a has a greater effect on them generally than any thing the spirits can do. Now, John Lennon had a deep respect for Gandhi, right? but John Lennon was in so much personal pain that he didn't even think to ask for Gandhi to come and talk to him. Right? Yeah, yeah thank you, AJ. Very yeah. good. So thank why you. didn't he? Because he was so much personal pain, just like often when we are in personal pain, we don't think about things. You know, we're just focused on the pain, focused on the pain. We don't think of the possibilities. And he... And he probably didn't even feel that that was a possibility to ask for Gandhi to come. And, that, and that's why I wanted to surprise him with that because I knew they'd met on earth. And when you've got someone in the spirit world who is on the divine love path, who you respected while you were on earth, that's a very powerful motivator and a very powerful tool because you trust them. And the biggest problem that a person has when they pass is they trust no one generally. Will you think of how many people you really trust right now on the planet? How many? You know, many of us don't even really trust our partner. <laughs> you know, we're worried that they're going to run off with the with the with the, with the next door neighbour's wife at some point. You know, we're worried about all sorts of things. Very few of us have very much trust of anybody here on earth. You think of how much doubt there is and how much misinformation and fear there is here. So by the time you pass, someone comes along and says, I'll tell you about the divine path. What, what, can I trust you? I don't know if I can trust you. You know, you've got all these emotions flowing. Like, how do you know you can trust them? You don't know. They might lead you up the garden path. You don't know. Like, and this is where, this is where when the, you is, there is someone you know who is on the divine love path, on earth or that you know is now on the divine love path in heaven who was on earth that you knew, there is often a great uh, rapport that's established and someone like John Lennon is going to progress very, very rapidly after meeting his old friend. Yeah. Oh, hi, Jay. Um, I don't, even, I don't even know why I'm asking this, but I need to ask this uh, because you have been the one that is in closer to God, and um, and can you tell us a bit more about why God created us? Um, 
this might be a huge question, I suppose. <laughs> they often are. Huh? <laughs> and go ahead. Because, you know, and, and one of the things that I... Why God created I mean, us? Is that the question? Yeah, before, and before, that's, that's one, but it's kind of double, triple folded. Yeah. But um, because before I've heard about the divine love path for you and, um, and questioned God's um, existence and thought it was a, an energy as well. Mm -hmm. um, but one of my reasonings was, well, okay, even if there is God and, and there is an entity or whatever it is and that created the universe, mm -hmm. then, then what's, what's beyond that? And it's always an, an universe, a universe beyond the universe and beyond the universe and beyond the universe. And so it's like a never-ending infinite and what's, why would God would want us to be here on this earth and go through all these to, to do what? What, what purpose? First, firstly, let's, let's uh, clarify. Him, you know, what is his purpose? Well, let's clarify some things first. Sure. Firstly, God doesn't want you to go through what you're currently going through. No, I don't mean that. No, way. let me finish and okay. answer the question fully. Yeah, no, yeah. Um, God doesn't want you to go through all the pain that you're currently going through and all the things you're going through here on earth. A lot of the things you're going through here on earth are the direct result of us walking away from God and that's why we're going through them. Right? So even, the, even you going through death is actually something that God ne not necessarily intended you go through. Does that make sense? Yes, it does, but I wasn't um, even... You're what? not letting me answer your question. No, but, no, but, but I know what your question was and... Okay. And I'm going to answer it fully. Okay. <laughs> the, the issue is that God created a whole set of laws that created the structure of the universe. And in the creation of these laws, God also determined that she, she wanted to have children. And she wanted to have children to extend her love to. That was her desire. Which, when you think about it, is the most purest reason why you could choose to have children too. In other words, to have a child so that you could extend love to them. So God's desire was firstly to, to have children and extend love to them. But secondly, God desired that they lived in an infinitely progressive universe so that they never were bored and they always had something to do and discover. They had a playground of infinitely growing conditions and sizes. Right? In other words, there is not a time in your progression in the future where you will stop and you will, and you will say, there's nothing more, because there is always something more that you can learn from an infinite God. And God designed it that way so that you can experience the joy of growing closer and closer and closer to God herself. That's why God designed it, so that you can actually firstly experience God's love in its full entirety. And that's the main reason why God created you, so that you could experience God's love. Now, all the things that we see happening on earth that are not part of God's love are all the results of mankind walking away from God's love and laws. But also God created a whole series of laws that created potential places of existence. So when, when I first came to know God myself in the first century, there were only six dimensions in the spirit world. There were no more dimensions other than six. And it was my own progression in love that created the seventh dimension. So God created the potentiality of the seventh dimension and the first person who entered the condition created the dimension itself. And then each subsequent person that entered the condition grew that dimension to what it is today. So now millions and millions of people exist in the seventh dimension and that dimension is very, very different to what it was when I first entered it myself. And God created this beautiful, the beautiful ability to continue everlasting progression. One of the emotions that you have is that you would like there to be a place where you can get to and stop for a moment. right? And there's an emotion in you, believe it or not, where you actually have this desire to stop and have a rest. Now in the spirit world, there'll be many times in your own progression and even here on earth where you'll feel like stopping and having a rest. And you'll feel like not dealing with certain emotions. And, and my suggestion to you 
is to try not to do that very often because there's always more joy in the next, after you've dealt with the next emotion. And, and if you deal with them as you progress, you'll always grow infinitely. And God created this to be an infinite progression, a place where you'll never stop progressing or learning. Um, thanks. I, I understand what you're saying. Um, my question, though, was that... Uh, yeah, no, I do. I do. Um, we are, we are like, we have children. I, I don't, but people have children. And... Um, and our children are very similar to us. So why are not similar to God from the beginning if he wanted to have children? Because God also gave you the free will to decide what you wanted, whether you just wanted to be the basic human soul that God designed you to be or whether you wanted to become a divine child of God. And God, God allows you to make that choice. And you're what you're worried, what, one of the things, you want God to have done it so that you're automatically a divine child of God. No, I'm, I just wonder. Why, why are you asking the question then? Simply because I don't can, know. Can I? So you are not being honest in any of your motivations for any of your questions. Thank you, but I can't see it. I know, I know. Yeah. And and if you could be honest, you would actually find a lot of emotions in you that you're currently trying to cover over. Right. One of the emotions is you have a deep frustration that God didn't create it the way that you would like it to have been done. No. No, no, I know, I no, I know you're going to say no. Yeah. But the truth is you do have a deep frustration about it. You would like it that you were automatically created as a divine being. As many of the New Age philosophies have taught you over many years. That, and how many of you believe that? Like, how many of you have been taught, like, you know, I'm automatically a divine being. I don't have to, I'm automatically one. Well, that's not the truth. And and there's an emotional reason why we want it to be what what is true. I mean, it would be much easier, of course. I, I'm this, doing, is what, this is the emotion yeah. you're ignoring. The emotion you're ignoring is that it's actually hard doing this emotional work. That's the emotion you're ignoring right now. Right now you're ignoring that emotion. And right now you're also now quite frustrated with me. Because you believe that I'm not getting you and understanding. And I'm feeling all of these things from you at a place where you can't, you're not even intellectually allowing yourself to, to acknowledge. And you don't believe I can feel that. And that's fine too. I do believe you can feel that. No, you don't. Because if you did, you would actually listen more openly to what I'm saying to you. You don't believe I can feel that. You believe that, it, and that's fine. You're allowed to hold on to that belief. That's fine too. Like I'm not going to judge you for having doing that. I'm just saying that this is what's actually happening, and this is one of the things that it's locking you down emotionally. Because it it it'll be better. Because at the moment there's a huge separation between where you are intellectually and where you are emotionally going on, exactly as John described for himself, where he was in his mind, in his mind, in his mind, in his mind, thinking that he was loved, thinking that he was being loved, thinking that he was being you know, open and peaceful and all these other things that he believed he was while he was on earth. He passes into the spirit world into a dark location. Obviously there's a huge discrepancy between what he believed in his head to be true and what was actually going on in his heart. Does that make sense? A huge discrepancy between those two places. Yeah. This is exactly what is happening for you. This is your law of attraction mm. regarding this. Mm. And, and so if you can allow yourself, all right, so there's, there's a big discrepancy between what's going on in my head and what's going on in my heart. So why do I want to hold on to what's in my head? The, the, you, can you see there must be quite a lot of emotional reasons why I want to hold on to what is what I think is here, what I think I am, rather than being what I really am. Right? Now, often what we feel is this deep frustration that many of us feel when we hear the divine love about the divine love path. We feel this deep frustration about getting to our emotions. We feel like this is so hard to get to our emotions. Like AJ is saying it's simple. I'm not finding it simple. I'm not finding it easy. It is so hard to get to my base emotions. And the reason why is the same reason why John spent 30 years in the place, in that one place. It's exactly the same reason. And that is that he was addicted to everything being true in his head 
and not facing the truth of his soul. That's the reason why. And that's the reason why many of us are still finding everything much more difficult than it needs to be. Because if we were totally open and truthful about what was really going on inside of our soul, so let's, let me say a few things that are really going on in your soul that you do not believe are going on in your soul. One thing, you believe God made it too hard to progress. No. So you don't, you, you say intellectually you don't believe me, no, but I'm, I'm saying there's an emotion in you. <laughs> there's an emotion in you that actually yeah. says this. But you don't want to acknowledge that emotion. Right now you don't want to even acknowledge it, mm-hmm. let alone allow that it's there. Right? Mm-hmm. So what's going to happen is at some point in the future you'll come back to me, whether it's 10 years' time or one year's time or six months' time or three months' time, and you go, wow. I was quite upset and angry about how hard it feels to get to my emotions right? and how hard God created it. You, and I'm saying to you, you will, you will do this at some point in the future. I hope so. I hope so. Yeah, but, yeah. but at the moment you don't even believe you're going to do that. Well, I, what I have been doing, I've been actually quite happy with my progress. I have actually done quite a lot and of course I, I know also that I've got much more to do and I'm... And I want to do more, um, and that's why I'm here. So no, why you're here is because you love external truth. You love to hear the truth of the universe. You love to hear the truths about God, but you are very resistive to hearing the truth about yourself. And that's that's the condition you're currently in. Now, many of us are in the same condition where we love to hear the external truths. We love to hear all of these things about God, the universe, spirits, what's going on, all these things that all these things start making sense to us here. Like this makes sense to us intellectually, and we start processing a few of the emotions and they start making a bit more sense to us. But most of us have a deep resentment about hearing anything about our true condition here. And currently, you have a deep resentment about hearing anything about your true condition here. I don't even feel resentment. <laughs> I'm not at all. No. Yeah, interesting, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> and, and, and what you're projecting at me is, no, AJ, you're wrong and I'm right and that's fine, right? Yeah. That's perfectly okay. I'm saying that's perfectly okay. But I am also saying that at some point in the future you'll realise that actually inside of here is a lot more rage than you actually think is there. I hope that's the case because that's what I want to do, be able to work through my emotions. No, you don't hope that's the case. I'm sorry. Okay, fine. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and again, I must disagree with you. And I know this is very challenging for some of the others of hearing what I'm saying because it sounds like I'm being obnoxious, but all I'm trying to do is tell you the truth about what's really there. The truth is right now there is rage in your soul. and you don't want to know about it. You say you hope to, but the truth is if you really wanted to know about it, you would already be feeling it. So the fact that you're not already feeling it means you don't want to know about it. Does that make sense? We, we always feel what we in the end do want to know in the end. We always feel it. And, and, and this is about openness. So, so this is what John was talking about with regard to arrogance, what he... With re- and this is, this is the emotion that you're yet to work yourself through. While you have this very, very fixed viewpoint of what's actually inside of you, you are not open to being told anything from an external person about what's inside of you. So right now you're, you're thinking, I'm open, I'm open, but right at the same moment there's these huge walls that, that anybody who will tell you anything will actually feel in you. And, and that is the arrogance that creates a lack of truth from entering the soul. And you need to allow yourself at some point to identify it and allow yourself to feel that. And John had to go through this process to do that. It took him 30 years of pain in the spirit world to go through that process. I hope that it doesn't take you 30 years of pain to go through the process so that you can listen to some truth that is actually there, ready to be told to you, but you don't want to know it. You think you even want to know it but you don't. When Mary does her workshops, one of the things Mary confronts is how much people think they want to know things when they really have huge resistances to knowing. Does that make sense? 
and, and it is one of the main problems that we have in helping people getting to a place where they can start facing the truth of what's inside of them is because they have this, this wall up about, I know what's inside of me, don't you tell me what's inside of me, I know. But, but let's just stop for a moment and think. A lot of the times you will admit that you can feel from other people things that they are clueless about within themselves. Isn't that true? And so if, if that's the case, then doesn't it also make sense that there are many things that you are clueless about inside of yourself that other people can easily see? Of course it makes sense. That's, but, why, that's why I said I hope that's true what you're saying. Yeah. No, but what I'm saying is when you say I hope, you don't hope. You, what you hope at the moment is that you, there is no more things for you to deal with inside of yourself. This is what you hope. I know there are. I know, I know there are lots of things. I know you things. know there are, but what I'm saying is that you actually hope there aren't. Oh. I don't hope there aren't at all. I know there are and I want to get through to And again, yeah. I told you another truth which you rejected. And that's okay, you're allowed that's to. Okay. <laughs> and so I think we move on to another person. Because all that's happening here is a rejection of truth after truth after truth. Could you clarify a little bit more the difference between energy and entity? An entity is a being, an actual, like you are an entity. You are made up of energy. So, so you have a consciousness, you have a certain personality, you have certain attributes and qualities, and one of those attributes and qualities is energy. So God actually is very similar in makeup in, in a way, in that God is an entity that has attributes and qualities, and one of those attributes is energy energy that she can give on a variety of different areas and she has a multitude of different energies even. So one of the energies that she has is an energy called the Holy Spirit which is a mechanism by which she connects to you to give you love. But she also has another energy called what, what some people call pranic energy and that energy is the energy by which she can feed you. She can actually feed you so well that you don't even have to eat. right? Um, so, so there's all these different forms of energy that God actually has and, and, and to refer to God as an energy is a misconception of God because God is an entity that has energy. Does that make sense? Just like you are an entity that has energy and power and you, you have feelings and emotions and you have all sorts of things and energy is one of the things you have. And your makeup is also of energy but that is not you completely. Because obviously you are more than that. You've got consciousness, you've got the ability to decide, choice, make decisions. And energy in its own right doesn't do that. If you think about energy from a point of view of just even light energy, it all has a very fixed way of operational, uh, operating through different physical laws. But you don't. You actually can transcend laws and break them and you can actually do other things with, with you, even right now with your body. You can do things. You have a result in your body as a result but you're allowed to make a lot of free choices. And every sentient or entity-based being has the ability of free choice. So the animal is an entity, right? But it's not got the same kind of free choice that you have. It's got a degree of free choice, but because it doesn't have the same soul as a human, it doesn't have a soul like a human does, it actually is very dependent upon the human's energy to, in terms of what happens to it. And animals, birds, all the creatures of the earth, even all the trees around us are very different to the human entity. And so I refer to the human soul as an entity. And the soul, one of its attributes is that it has a body. So you have a physical body, that's one of its attributes. You also have a spiritual body, and that's another of its attributes. The physical body is made of, up of, a, of what we call here on earth atomic structures, which is very different to the atomic structures that make up the spirit body. Now, both the material body and the spirit body are energy forms, but they're not the entity of the human soul. The human soul has the attribute of having these energetic forms that it can manipulate and control. Can you see sort of the difference? Yep. Yep. Um, if we go up to the back corner there. You're allowed to. You're allowed to ask whatever you want. <laughs> Hello, AJ. Um, a number of years ago, maybe 15 approximately, I had an experience with um, 
I'm, I'm actually hoping that you might be able to help clarify exactly what this experience was or the beings. The first question is, um, is there such thing as angels? Uh, yes. Okay. Do you want a long answer or a short answer? Um, Can I you. clarify what an angel is? Please do. An angel is a person who used to live on earth, actually. Every single person in the spirit world that I've ever met have all ever lived on earth. An angel is a person who's lived on earth but who has received enough divine love to become at one with God through the same process that I described to John Lennon earlier. And as you receive divine love, it transforms your soul into a divine soul. So you're no longer a human soul. The soul actually transforms itself into, a divine, into having a divine nature. And as it does that, in the transition between the seventh and the eighth sphere, it actually transforms into being at one with God. And every spirit above the seventh sphere, so the eighth sphere and above, is actually termed in the spirit world an angel. Now, there are many spirits in the spirit world who term themselves angels who are actually in the sixth sphere as well. They just think they're angels, but they haven't yet gone through that particular process of becoming at one with God. To actually become an angel, and divine in nature, if you could say that, you need to go through the process of receiving divine love into your soul. And that is a free will choice that each of us can either choose to reject or accept. Uh, each of us have the same capacity. You have the capacity to become an angel, even while you're on earth. Could you help me understand, um, I don't know if you're able to see that experience you know, on some sort of spiritual level, um, where exactly they took me? Um, it was to a place um, where we were all, the, there was two beings, I don't know if they were angels or guides, I, I can't really say, mm -hmm. um, and we were looking back down on the earth and there was an overwhelming feeling of love and oneness and peace. Mm -hmm. And I guess my question is one, why does it happen to some people and not others? I wouldn't call myself the holiest of people and there's so many other people on earth that I would consider more holier than myself or mm -hmm. more deserving, I guess. Yeah. And, um, and have I wasted some sort of opportunity by not being able to remember certain communication from that experience? Um, in the answer to your second question first, no, you haven't wasted any opportunity for not remembering. There are some things that you were taught in that process that helps you be open to doing more of, you know, becoming closer to God. 